welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new my name is Melina and today we're going to talk a bit about what I've read in August so let's jump into it August was a bit of a slower month in terms of reading for me I typically read between six to like 10 or 11 books and this month I read six books which is on the lower end of my average the main reason for that was I read Dune over the month and it is a big boy. It doesn't look like it but the pages are really thin, thin and it's about 700 pages a little less it is 670 672 pages and it's a lot of information. I had to take a lot of breaks to get through it. I had to switch between the audio and the physical book but I did it and I really liked it. I definitely recommend you either look up a chart of all the character names or watch the movies because if I didn't watch the movies first I would be very confused about who everyone is in the story. There's a lot of things I really like about this specifically getting to know the motivations of the people because it's in different perspectives so you get to understand what Jessica is thinking and what Paul is thinking and what are their plans and so on and so forth. I also really like that they explain their powers a lot better in the book than in the movies. In the movies it kind of just happens and you're just supposed to accept it for the most part. Um, to be fair this book is very old and they did have a original movie so they're assuming that more people knew about the Dune series and the Dune world than maybe someone like me who went into it. Or, I mean not blind, I actually even watched the movies but if you went into it completely blind I think you'd be a little confused. While reading Dune it kind of gave me George R. R. Martin vibes because of the fact that it kind of just switches perspectives without really too much background information on who everyone is and you're supposed to jump into the world. And I did the same thing with Game of Thrones where I had to print out a chart. I printed out a non-spoiler family tree and it helped me a lot because I would read it a chapter and I kind of would figure out where we're at, who we're with and everything. Um, I didn't print out a chart for this. I watched the movies, the part one and part two of the newer remake. I really enjoyed these. I will definitely continue the series, at least the first three books that are originally written by Frank Herbert and not his son. And overall, I think I would rate this a 4.25 stars. It is not for everyone. It's definitely for people who like sci-fi, but I really enjoyed it and I really recommend it. The next book that I'm going to talk about is Out on a Limb. This is the indie version of the book. I know they have a published version that came out a few months ago. This book was on my August TBR video. I will link it down below if you haven't watched it already. But I was really excited that I really got to it. It was a really good book. I like the pages were super thick. I got through it very quickly. It's a really heartwarming pregnancy story about two people who are physically disabled. And while I have read some romances that do have people with a limb disability, I have never read a romance like this one. I hate the pregnancy trope so much. I didn't even realize that this was a pregnancy story because I didn't read the back of the book. I just jumped into it until maybe, I don't know, they tell you really early on, maybe the first 20-30 pages that she's pregnant. And I was a little um, disappointed because I hate that trope so I went into it thinking I'm going to dislike the story. But honestly, the story is more than about a pregnancy. While it is a focal point because she is pregnant throughout the entire story. I do think this is about two people learning to accept themselves beyond their limb disability and also learning to trust and rely and build this friendship for this person. It's such a beautiful story. I really liked it. I really think that most people would enjoy this romance and I think I would rate this a 4.25 stars. I can't wait to read more stories by Hannah Bodomian because I really really enjoyed this one. The next book I'm going to put over here it is Middle of the Night by Riley Sager and I did not love this. I don't really like to give too much plot when it comes to thriller because I do feel like I can accidentally spill something or um, give, I just feel, I just feel like it's best to sometimes go into these blind and so I will give a little 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 tidbit. It's about a guy who goes back to live at his childhood home where something really horrific happened when he was younger and um, he starts ex he starts experiencing some very suspicious things. I feel like I don't know. I was really disappointed in this one if I'm being completely honest. I have only read two books by Riley Sager. I read last year's book and this year's book. My book club did both of his books. They're big fans of his and I think maybe I just am reading the wrong ones because while the first one was not bad, this one was not good. It was lacking a lot of depth. I don't know if depth is the best word, but I feel like they had some plot points that he inserted and I felt that they were going to do something with that and then they really ended up doing nothing with it and so that was a little underwhelming. Even the plot twists that did happen, I just was not very wowed. I was very 
you know, I could, it's, I could have not read this book and been completely fine is the point. And honestly, I would tell you to skip this. I think I would rate this one eight, three stars. The next book I'm going to talk about is The Fiance Dilemma by Elena Armas. Um, the Fiance Dilemma is part of the Long Game duology. The first book being The Long Game, which is a series that takes place in North Carolina. The first book follows Adeline and Cameron, and the second book follows Adeline's best friend Matthew and her half-sister Josie. The story was really good. It was really cute. Elena Armas is a very interesting author to me because I read the American Roommate Experiment first and then I went back and read the Spanish Love Deception and I was actually disappointed because I felt like the writing in her second book was way better than the first book. It also didn't help that the Spanish Love Deception is super hyped on social media and just online in general. While I found it to be very mid, it's it's a cliche romance with just some angst and so it just did it wasn't it for me honestly. I have it and it's a book that I would unhaul if it wasn't for the fact that I actually liked the American Roommate Experiment. So then the third book was The Long Game and I felt like since the American Roommate Agreement her writing has been very stagnant. I don't think it's improved but it hasn't gotten worse. There's always these things where I'm like this is really cute and there's also moments where I, I feel like your writing is very cute and if that's what you're going for you're going to love her books but if you're going for books that you that have a little more depth or extra plot to them besides the main romance I feel like she sometimes falls flat on them she does try to make mention of deeper issues but she mentions them and they're very surface level I feel like she could do so much more and in the end she kind of just mentions them and then like jumps over it with either humor or just doesn't dive deep which is something that I feel like Abby Jimenez or Emily Henry does really well I feel like they always have a deeper theme or a deeper topic that gets mentioned and they really dig deep and it just feels so human while I feel like Elena Armas is scratching the surface and I think her books would improve a lot more if she dug deeper into the issues that she makes her main characters go through. Anyways I'm running on a tangent. This is the point was the book was really cute. It was a fake dating fake marriage trope. The humor was okay. I do hate that they that Josie constantly would mention how goofy Matt was but in all honesty we really didn't even see his goofiness until maybe the last 15% of the story so she would say that he's goofy without any example of him actually being goofy and stuff like that really bothers me I don't know why I felt like he was very serious throughout most of the story and maybe it's maybe it's the fact that we didn't really get his perspective in this but I definitely will say it was a cute story I think I was in between a 3.25 and a 3.5 stars I will continue reading her books because I feel like she creates these really fun situations and the plots are fun. I just think she could dive deeper with heavier topics. The next book I read this month was Funny Story by Emily Henry. I love this. I will preface this by saying that this is a romance. It's not like Happy Place where it's a romance but it dives deeper on. For me, really hard-hitting feelings and emotions of getting older. This is a true romance. This gives me Abby Jimenez with an Emily Henry twist on it, if that makes any sense. If you get it, you get it. These characters are so human so real so beautifully written the friendships in this the family relationships everything just feels like you are reading someone's real life and i don't know how emily henry manages to write the mundane life of these two people i mean they do have a special twist to it but in theory their lives are very normal and she writes it in a way that is just so relatable but so beautiful and sometimes the metaphors just really speak to me it's so good okay well let's start from the beginning this book follows miles and daphne and Daphne was supposed to be getting married to her fiance Peter and on the night of Peter's bachelorette party his best friend Petra Petra expresses her love for him and so he decides to break off the engagement and get together with Petra which is Peter's best friend. Daphne is kicked out of the house that her and Peter share together and so she moves in with Petra's ex-boyfriend Miles because he offers a place for her to stay and so fast forward I don't know how, how long and they are living together and becoming roommates and it's a story of them. It is a fake dating trope actually. That 
that turns into a true friendship that turns into just the most beautiful love story i really love this and i definitely recommend this i would rate this a five star but that is because i personally think emily henry is almost all five stars for me with the exception of book lovers i think i just need to reread it because i don't understand how i could love all of her books except for one one more thing if you are a romance lover i think you will highly love this if you don't love romance maybe this one will not be for you but emily henry is just such an amazing author but the romance in this if you're a romance lover it's not because it's romance honestly it's because of the friendship relationships it is seeing them overcome their own insecurities their own trauma mixed in with um the family drama that they each have to go through it's just so good it's so 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 good i cannot rate this or recommend this high enough i do think this may be one of my favorite reads of the year for sure the final book that i read this month is the comeback this was a book that i'm so glad that i actually got through my best friend lent this to me i want to say maybe over six months ago and i just never got around to it i was like putting it off and putting it off and putting it off and i thought this was gonna be the perfect summer read and i was right this follows ariadne and she is a lawyer who has basically been working her whole life to become partner of the firm that she's working for so she is putting in overtime she is all work no play and that suddenly starts to change when her roommate's cousin lives with them for a little bit he is from korea and he needs a break from life he's very to himself polite quiet but also a little quirky and strange and as they start to get to know one another they realize that there's more to both of them and so it's kind of cute to see them help each other through really difficult times and just get to know each other on a really normal level and then lo and behold, when he is not a normal person, he is part of a really popular K-pop group. And so life is flipped upside down when, when all of this comes to light. And it's, it's just a cute romance. I will say, I think that this is written a little juvenile considering that they are in their, I want to say mid to late twenties if she's trying to make a partner in a lawyer's firm. But the way that this is written and the way that her thoughts are written i would say that this is probably a ya to young adult fiction in terms of what i would her thoughts give me early 20s or late teens versus late 20s but that's fine it was a fun read it was a quick read um the chapters are a little long which is i think my only gripe while i was reading this on paperback i do think things go faster if i read it on my kindle but because i had the physical you know that's what i read nonetheless it was a really cute read and i think it was perfect for summer even though it wasn't necessarily a summer romance i would rate this a 3.25 stars and yeah that's basically what i read in august it wasn't that many books like i said but i'm glad i got through dune which was a book that i had bought and it is a book that i've wanted to take the time to read over the last year so i'm glad i finally did it i definitely will take a little break before starting the next ones and i'm also so glad that i read funny story i always put off emily henry's books because i just know i'm gonna love it or i'm gonna feel so much emotion if you read my book it's just covered in like highlights and markings and you know it's just covered in annotations but i'm glad i did it because it's one of my favorites of the year and that's where i'm gonna end the video today Today. what were some of your highly rated books of the year i would love to know i would love to add something to my tbr or make it a priority to read sooner rather than later um, if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you're not subscribed already please subscribe it would make me so happy until the next one guys